What's going on guys? I'm Jody. This is Inspire Woodcraft. As some of you know, I'm a bit limited on uh, how much I can film and how, you know, professionally done I can actually make these videos now with the unfortunate circumstances of the world lately. And so I'm going to do the best I can here to explain to you guys how to check combination squares for square, how to dial them in and get them square once you, you know, figure out what your readings are. And then of course, how to uh, tune these up a little bit so we get a little bit better service life out of them. Now, I'm gonna throw a lot of information out here in hopefully a bit of a quick time. And so I'm gonna have to maybe skip on a few details. Details which some of you guys really, really like and some of you guys really, really hate. If you needed a detail that you didn't quite hear in the video, leave a comment, ask a question, and I will be sure to keep an eye on those comments so that I can help you guys out when needed. Now, checking a combination square for square requires basically the combination square, a pencil, or for real good precision, you could use a marking knife. I'm not going to use a marking knife because it's really hard to pick up on camera. I am gonna be using a pencil, but if you needed absolute precision out of this, a marking knife would be your best bet. You're also gonna need some sort of something to reference this off of. If you're using a 12 inch combination square, you're gonna to wanna to reference off a board that's going to be able to give you the length of your ruler fully extended. On a 12 inch combination square, it's gonna be like roughly nine and three quarters inch of material. Okay, so you can use a board like that. If you were using, um, say a, a six inch combination square, which is a very popular option, you could get away with something quite a bit more narrow. What do we use for material to check? It doesn't really matter. A lot of people will say to use the factory edge of a piece of plywood. I don't necessarily disagree, but I will say check the quality of your plywood ahead of time. Common exterior grade plywoods, although they'll all have that same factory edge, they're gonna be a lot rougher, not only on the faces, but they're gonna be a lot rougher on that factory edge. When it comes to a tool like this where you're asking it to be a lot more precise, you're going to want the edge you reference against to be a lot more precise when you're checking this for square. So just be mindful of that. If you're using a piece of, you know, a larger, wider board like that piece of pine, make sure that you run it through a joiner, run it through a table saw uh, with some sort of jig that makes you have a nice jointed edge on it. Same with a piece of plywood. Whatever it is, you wanna make sure that that edge is nice and jointed and preferably smooth. It doesn't have anything sticking out of it, no dust or dirt or anything like that. I know some of this is common sense, but they're things that get brought up. So I think a finished grade plywood is gonna be your best bet. Whatever you do, just make sure that it has a nice, smooth, true edge on it. Now to check these, literally the only thing you have to do, I like to uh, extend the ruler all the way until this bottom corner sort of starts to go into the head itself. So it looks something like that, okay? And then I tighten it down, I bring it down to my material. Once I have it down to my material here, I wanna make sure that this head is pushed all the way up against my jointed edge this way, but I also wanna make sure that my ruler is all the way flat here. One of the things that can happen with these is that you can have a bent ruler, at least or especially with our lower end tools, okay? So if this ruler is bent, and I go to set it down here on my piece of plywood, if this ruler is bent up, that means my pencil or my knife is gonna slide under this ruler and then come back out where it's touching. It's gonna to give me a goofy reading. When I flip it over, the opposite's gonna happen. I'm gonna be okay here, but when I get to here, this is gonna be like a hump and my pencil or my knife is gonna slide underneath there and then come back out. Again, giving me a goofy reading. So I wanna make sure that I'm pushed all the way tight up against here and all the way down here. I'm gonna take, in this case, a pencil I'm gonna make sure that I'm not flicking it out. I'm not you know, changing the angle of my hand and getting a goofy reading. I'm gonna leave my hand in the same position. Just draw a nice, hopefully, straight line. I'm gonna flip it over like this. What I like to do is I like to then just slide it forward until that entire line just barely disappears. Okay, tight up against the jointed edge. Make sure my whole ruler is nice and flat. And same thing, I'm gonna come in here Nice, straight, even line. If I slide this over, I should notice if there's a difference between this end and this end, okay? And in this one, we can tell that this has, these two are a little closer together. This distance is a little farther apart, okay? That means that this part of my ruler needs to come 
double check, make sure I'm right here, this end needs to come in this way. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, when you take apart a combination square, if you look down into this groove here, okay, let's say that where the clamp bolt is, is sort of the pivot point in a teeter-totter, okay? There's two pads inside that groove that are cast into the head. Removing material from one of those heads is going to mean that you're sort of pivoting, in a way, your ruler one way or another. Keep in mind, you can't build material back up. You can only take material away. That means you have to be really careful when you tune these things up or else you're going to remove so much material so quickly that there's not gonna be any material left to remove and your tool is gonna to be basically useless, okay? So, I like to figure out which direction, okay, does this ruler need to come in or out? And then what I will do is I will draw a arrow right here saying that side needs to go down, okay? What's really nice about using pencil on these is I can get in here and just erase that. And then when I go to use this tool again, after it's been all squared up, I don't have any markings on here, there's nothing permanent, and then when I need to square it up again down the road, I can just remark that the same as I did the first time. Now there's a few different ways you can remove material from those little pads that are inside of there. The most sort of complicated way, and it's not so complicated as much as that most people don't have all the tools necessary for things. Needle files or jeweler's files is something that's a nice luxury to have. A lot of people probably don't have them laying around, but you can get a file that's small enough to slide inside of here and remove material from either one of these pads, depending on which way the ruler needs to go. Again, remove a little bit of material, put the square all back together, check it the same way you did before on that nice jointed edge, see what needs to happen. If your lines are starting to come closer together, you have sort of an idea for how much material to remove, but you can also check and see how quickly you're getting back to square. If you don't have jeweler's files or needle files laying around, a simple piece of sandpaper will do the trick as well. Uh, you can feel comfortable going up with the uh, coarser grits. They're gonna remove material quicker, of course, but again, you just have to be careful. I even just use these discs type that we all have. I fold it in half, that's just big enough to slide it down in that hole and just sort of drag out some material. So you can get it down in there and drag out material. If it's thin enough, you can actually sort of file away at that, okay? It's a little awkward, but it'll get the job done. One of the things that makes these inherently go out of square is the exact thing that's gonna help us make it be square. This is the absolute easiest way to make this thing square again. This is aluminum. This is stainless steel. This is way harder than the aluminum, meaning that I can actually just take the edge of this, drop it down in there, okay? I'm not actually hooking it up to the clamp bolt. I'm actually just sliding that corner and using it almost like a file or a chisel to scrape away the material on the pad on this side, okay? I'm gonna take just a little bit out, maybe knock it on here and blow out the shavings, okay? Then I'm gonna put it back together, tighten it up, check it for square and see what I need to do. Again, I can't stress enough, go a little bit at a time or else you're just gonna whittle this down to nothing. Now, if you have a more higher end tool, um, one that has either a hardened or a cast iron head, you're gonna probably need files because this ruler isn't gonna be strong enough to actually dig the material away, but it's also one of the things that makes a higher end tool worth it. So now we know how to check them for square, we know how to get them square, but what about all the other sort of inherent lower standard things that come with a lower end tool. How do we sort of tune this thing up to make it work for us a little bit longer and have a longer lifespan? Well, the very thing that we just did to remove material with the blade itself is kind of one of the reasons why these things fall out of square so much because every time you dig this thing in, you jam it in and you look for that groove there and you go to tighten it down, every time you take the ruler in and out, every time you slide it, you're removing a little bit of material, potentially, depending on how rough this edge is. So my recommendation, is to actually take this rule out and sort of doctor this rule up to begin with. When you go to a higher end tool, you'll notice that the ruler itself, the edges are a lot smoother. They're not necessarily rounded over, but they're eased. And some of that has to do with the finish. A lot of it has to do with the machining process itself when you buy a higher end tool. You can do the exact same thing with these. These are very sharp on the corners. And what happens is, is as you go, those sharp corners, especially on a bent ruler, will grab into your material. 
If you think about it, if this ruler is bent and the edges are sharp and I have a hump in the middle here, it's going to be grabbing here and here and sort of cutting into that material as I go. Not enough to tear it up, not enough to cause any tear out, but just enough to grab a little bit and make this tool sort of a pain in the butt when I go to use it. So let's try and check the bend of this ruler and let's ease these edges. The easiest thing to do, honestly, you could just use some sandpaper. You wanna make sure you do it to the entire length of the ruler. Just take your time, don't overdo it. You're not trying to completely round over the edge. You're just trying to knock down that sharp edge that's on there. You could also use a file, as long as you're careful with a file and you don't go absolutely crazy and end up mangling the whole ruler itself. Another thing you might wanna check is actually the edges, the corners of the ruler itself. Now I'm gonna tell you, you wanna be mindful of how much material you'll take from these edges because the idea is, is with these rulers, you want the edge to be an absolute zero point and any graduations past that zero point to be accurate in relation to that zero point. So if I come back to the one inch mark, I want it exactly one inch from the end of that ruler. So you don't want to really manipulate the end of this too much, but there's no reason why you can't take and sort of just round over these corners just a little tiny bit, just enough so that when you go and slide this into the body and you are fooling around trying to get to that thing, you're not digging into those pads that we use to adjust this to begin with, therefore removing uh, material and making this thing fall out of square unintentionally. Another thing you could do is you could come through here and you can sort of take some sandpaper or something and just sort of polish this edge up a little bit. I think if you're going to spend so much time absolutely doctoring this thing up, you might just wanna get a higher end tool to begin with, but again, to each their own. There are little things that you can do to make this thing work for you. Now, I thought I was the only one that had this issue, but I saw a commenter the other day that said, that one of the reference points on his combination square wasn't even flat to begin with, that it didn't even come that way. Okay, this is my six inch one. The bottom reference here on the head, the 90 degree reference, actually has a twist in it. And it's not just the face here, it's actually this whole bottom section. Okay, so when you sight down it like this, it actually has this warp to it. How do you go about fixing that? Well, what I do, what I did for this one is I have a six inch joiner. I put some sandpaper down on the bed of the joiner and I took this out, okay? So we'll take the knob completely off, we'll take the spring out and we'll take the uh, pin out, the, uh, the clamp bolt, excuse me, okay? And I have the joiner bed, I have the fence itself. So long as these are 90 degrees, you can then take this, you can push this up against the fence side with some sandpaper down here on the bottom, okay, right up against this corner, pushing down into the corner, if you will. Those of you with joiners know what I'm talking about. And you can actually slowly just run this back and forth on that sandpaper, and that will reference off of this face and bring this into a 90 degree uh, reference from the side, if that makes sense. It'll, you'll basically be mim mimicking this 90 degree mark. So it's going to flatten it out and it's gonna pull it into 90 degrees. Well, what if you don't have a joiner? Well, you can use a table saw, as so long as your table itself is 90 degrees in reference to the fence. You could also use a miter saw. A miter saw's back fence should be 90 degrees to the table. The same thing can apply to a band saw. If you don't have any of those things, you can simply make a jig to do this in. Take two pieces of wood, you might have to glue, clamp these, something, so long as this is 90 degrees. If it's 90 degrees on the inside here, you're gonna be fine. Let that dry up, whatever you have to do. Put some sandpaper in here at the bottom, holding this up against the fence and down, just keep going. Another thing you can do to check on your work, those of you that have uh, hand planes know what I'm gonna do here, take a Sharpie, just draw some marks right along the edge of this here. And what that'll do is as you sharpen it, the Sharpie will start to go away on the places that you've sanded and it's going to make it easier to check uh, how far you've gone, what your progress is. After that, this thing will be nice and flat and it'll be 90 degrees to the side. Now, as far as checking the 45 degree goes, you're gonna have to have an already known 45 degree reference. So whether that be a miter square, whether that be another combination square that you know is true, and you're going to have to keep whittling that side away until you get it to the accurate uh, degree there. 
sorry. The other thing that you're gonna to wanna to do after you get this completely dialed up is you're gonna to wanna to recheck this for square. Because you took material from here and or here, that means that this is probably not any longer um, working in a 90 degree fashion with those pads anymore. So you're just gonna to wanna to check it for square real quick, but as we saw earlier, that's really easy and quick to fix. Now, if you're absolutely just fed up with basically everything I just said in this video and you want to spend a little money to get a higher quality tool, I recently, as some of you know and are probably tired of hearing me say, uh, bought this PEC. Model PEC is known for manufacturing um, parts, pieces, full kits of combination squares for other major companies as well. Very high quality product, but I got this as a blemished tool. That means that cosmetically, it may not be 100%, might have a scratch in the finish. In my case, I have, where's it at? These two little corners look like they're kind of been, um, you know, nicked almost. Does not affect the quality of the tool. It arrived completely square, completely precise. I absolutely love this thing. I was able to still get it in the configuration that I want. In fact, this one I got with the protractor head and the center head as well. And I probably saved myself about $100 by buying a blemish tool. Granted, I got it on sale on top of that, but it sure beats buying this at full price but now I have a very high quality, higher end tool, but I saved myself some money in the process. So I will leave links to this in the description. I'll leave a link for a unblemished one so you guys can see sort of the price difference, but I'll also leave links for the two piece kit, that's a square head and the ruler, and also the four piece kit, like I showed you guys before. I personally, at my point in my life, highly recommend checking these out, upgrading, getting away from the lower end stuff, if you need to. If you don't need to, if this stuff is fine for you, if you don't mind tweaking it once in a while, there's a lot of knowledge to be had about how to even square these up to begin with instead of just throwing stuff away and getting new ones. But if that's okay with you, definitely worth uh, what you bought to begin with. But if you wanna upgrade, definitely recommend checking these out. Like I say, guys, if I left something out, if I stumbled a little bit too much or something like that, let me know. Things are getting a little weird in the world, uh, so filming is Definitely a challenge for me. Anyways, thanks so much for watching this video. As always, you guys, I'll see you guys in the next one.